Felixia, and welcome to this Inflation Madness live stream. Inflation's coming, well, not quite as expected, and that's, of course, going to move the world today. And I want you to understand better than anybody else out there what that's going to do to the market, how you can make money out of it, when the rates are going to come down and everything else that me and our former investment banker cats back there can share with you. I am going to shrink myself to the appropriate size. And oh, yes, in 12 hours, I'm running the first evening live trading training that we've ever done. And about 900 of you have registered. So there are literally 100 spots left because I've already doubled the capacity, but I can't make the live room any bigger, even if Cholula would want you to join. There is only one opportunity left to do so. So come and join us over there. And loving all the hearts on the live chat. Thank you very much. And shall we have a look at what the data is? Or do you just not, not want to know? You just not want to know? Shall we just skip past it and just sing Kumbaya? I think that's probably the right approach, isn't it? Isn't that what the government would do? Well, let me take a screenshot of it and we'll properly, properly go into this. I've got charts. I've got the data underneath the data. I've got everything you want to know. If you want to see what the first reaction is from the market. It's not terrible, except Google and, well, Boeing. Boeing. We need to talk about Boeing. Boeing is... Um, well, whistleblowers also fall out of airplanes, apparently. That's what happened over there. We'll get into that in, in, in a little while, which ties in quite nicely with the trade idea we put out on March 11th, um, which seems very topical right now. <laughs> and uh, we told you to buy a put. Well, we didn't tell you, but we made you want to think about it, if you, if you see what I'm saying. And uh, so come and, come and check out our, our trading newsletter, which is at goatacademy.substack.com. And if you're wondering how to make money out of this, we are also live trading this already. Um, in fact, we had a live session just now. Did it already close? Is it already over? Anyway, we're, we're, we're live trading it. So check it out. And um, let's dive into this. So what was the market expecting? Well, the market was expecting core inflation, which is inflation minus food and energy, because why would you need food and energy? I mean, surely, surely you don't. Surely you're a robot, aren't you? Didn't Elon make you? We're expecting 0.3%. Well, we got 0.4%. That's not good. That's higher than expected. That means the Fed is not going to start cutting rates over the Christmas Easter holiday because they eat so many chocolate eggs that they feel like doing so. No, they won't. And year on year, it's also on the higher end of expectations. The regular unadulterated month-on-month -month inflation is also on the high end of expectations. And it's important to understand the why. And you can see here we are, we're sort of wobbling sideways. We're going up, we're going down, we're going up, we're going down. We're not really coming down, right? It's just not really happening on, uh, on the data front here. Let me just see what's, what's actually gone up here. So shelter has increased 0.4%. Rent has gone up half a percentage point. Airline fares, 3.6 percent. I mean, somebody's got to pay for all those extra doors that keep falling off. Vehicle insurance up almost a percentage point. That's quite a lot. Medical care, 0 0.5. Hospital service, 0 0.6. I hope you were not involved in one of those airline in incidents. Drugs are cheaper. Yay. And dental services are up 0 0.4 percent. Personal care is half a percent more expensive. Furnishings are cheaper. Why? Because no one's buying furniture because we're actually in a recession. But obviously, that's a secret. The government wouldn't want you to know now, right? You saw me mentioning on Sundays, my camera fell over. They know something. <laughs> what about shelter? So the big thing that's really come up a lot in this inflation saga was shelter, rent, or a cardboard box under a bridge somewhere near you. And it's come down, but it's very sticky up here, right? It's still like 6% year on year. We'd like it to come back down more to its long-term trend of about 2.5%. That hasn't actually happened yet. And if you look at core, which is kind of what the Fed looks at, 
that's pretty elevated, right? We're not really like falling massively. We're still at 2021 levels, you know? We're still at just under 4% here annually. So that's not brilliant. Uh, what have we got here? We've got service inflation and goods inflation. So in, in yellow, we've got goods. And we've been having goods deflation. Goods were actually getting cheaper. Now we've got inflation again. And at the same time, in blue, services are still picking up very, very significantly. So the majority is still here, here, services. That's year on year. We can skip past that. This is super cool. This is like the statistic that takes the biscuit. It's, wait for this, it's, it's inflation minus food minus energy. So, you know, fuel, electricity minus housing. <laughs> What's left? Seriously, what is what is it? Why are we even measuring this? It's like I don't know, hamster food has gone up, and even with with when you exclude all the important things that we actually need to survive, well, it's still up, isn't it? So, and on a month-on-month -month basis, in green down here, it's still at pretty elevated levels. If you go back here for the last two years. So inflation is proving a little bit stickier than we'd like it to be, a bit more like toffee than anything else. And here is a nice visualization of what's causing a lot of this, transport. I blame the truckers. <laughs> uh, you got to blame somebody. Transport is, is, is like the biggest comp component there. So that's where we are. And if you thought, well, but inflation's come down a lot, so it's all, all, all well and good. Bit of Biden bashing, right? We're allowed. We're allowed to bash the incumbent in the White House. It looks very comfortable in there. This is the Biden term so far. 18.7% inflation in total. And no, it hasn't gone down. Just because it comes down, it doesn't mean you erase inflation. It would need to go up. The previous chap in the White House, we shall refer to him simply as the orange one, Monsieur Le Trump. We had 8% inflation. So from an inflation perspective, you know, one, one's got more inflation than, I mean, Trump might be upset about this. He likes to be the biggest man in the room, right? He might be like, I created more inflation than anybody. No, he didn't. About 10% less. So Biden just kind of gets, a, gets an award here, gets a medal for creating more inflation than any president in, in recent history, which is, is something to look at. Um. Don't forget shrinkflation and crapflation, foodflation. Cardboard boxes are up too. Nobody's buying furniture. Indeed, the cardboard boxes are getting more expensive. The like button is apparently also getting more expensive. Only 85 of you have dared to press it. I mean, it might use some electricity. I can see why you're being cautious about it. I, I really can. But NVIDIA is up. So just say AI and everything is all right, right? I mean, what else matters? AI and Bitcoin is up. Bitcoin's up to some silly level. I wanted, I wanted actually a day chart. NVIDIA is, oh, that's AI. I wanted NVDA. Did I type in AI? And yeah, we're up. We're up at the top of the yesterday's trading range pretty much at 876, slightly above the 875 resistance, which is still a little bit there, although 900 is the big one. And then BTC USD, for all you knuckleheads out there, 72 thousand dollars and a hundred and forty five dollars that is almost all-time high but looking very very good so what are we worried about what about something like one of our favorite tech stocks out there palantir is up a percentage point over 25 dollars which is nice to see 27 is the resistance what about banking land so far is slightly in the green but only slightly i think eight dollars is the resistance there any other stocks you want me to to look at um well, my stock's got up. If I press the like button, says Jimmy, yes, that is absolutely 100% guaranteed. Uh, there is no way that they would not go up once you've hit that like button. Um, Steve, brilliant. John says, I feel like you do more webinars than Nintendo live tradings. I think I did two live trading sessions last week, John. So I think I'd, I'd disagree with you on that one. I was actually going to live trade tonight, but Patrick had one scheduled. Although I don't see it right now, which is 
maybe strange. Maybe he pulled it last minute. I don't know why. Um, otherwise, I would have done one. But there we are. And then we have um, Boeing. The whistleblower who raised safety concerns and has given evidence just days before he apparently swallowed a knife and jumped off a cliff and then drove over himself, something like that. Um, I don't want to make fun of it, but it seems rather rather weird. Apparently, it's a self-inflicted wound, the BBC had said, and the Charleston County coroner has confirmed it. Um, he was found dead in his truck in the hotel car park. Not suspicious at all, is it? Sure it isn't. Nothing to see here. Um, but yeah, so Boeing's troubles continue. Boeing, BA. And we're down another 1.8% here pre-market. So this thing keeps keeps falling. Seriously keeps falling. So our our trade idea is, is making some nice money. If you are part of our newsletter, Trading Floor Whispers, you would have gotten your pause on that a couple of days back. Felixfriends.org slash sub, S-U-B is how you get that. Um, is NVIDIA up or down? I think it's up. Darren, thanks for the disclaimer. I appreciate that. He shot himself seven times. Um, yes, apparently after he fell out of the truck, drove over himself, climbed back inside, made it look like an accident. Uh, so yes, I'm sure there's nothing, nothing untoward going on there at all. Um, Jonathan thinks it looks like a fake out the market going up. Well, I think ultimately, you know, we are near, near the top of, of a market, but the top 10 stocks right now have a P.E. ratio of 25. Bubbles typically burst somewhere above 30. 33, I think, was the last one. And then I think it was 42 and 1999. So as long as we believe that earnings will continue to improve because of the magic letters A and I, then I think we've got we've got a bit, bit, bit of room to go here. And, and, and you look at pullbacks and... The next day you get you go back up. So it's not, you know, it's 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 not cataclysmic. You know, see the zigzagging here that's sort of going on there. If you look at the VIX, the fear indicator, it's at 14. Nothing bad happens at 14. It just doesn't. You need to like bounce out into the 20 plus, and that's where life gets interesting. 25, 30, and then it gets really, really interesting. So right here, right now. Yeah, it's 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 increasing at a very gentle slope. It's a bit like a like a jog up a uh, slightly increasing road, which is very tiring. But it's not getting to a point of damn, um, the world's about to implode. And let me show you in the summer of 2022. See, we were in the 30s. That's where life gets interesting. Up down here, not a lot happens. And, you like, I can overlay, say, QQQ to this. And invert QQQ, just, just for giggles. And no, actually, that's not inverted. I think inverting is always a bit confusing, isn't it? But basically, high VIX, low QQQ, you get the idea, right? Uh, and, and right now, low VIX, high NASDAQ. So as long as we stay down here in this sort of la-la land of oh, nobody has to buy insurance for their portfolio, surely nothing will go down if you've not heard about artificial intelligence. Uh, as long as people believe that, everything goes all right. Although, honestly, hedging at this level, it's so freaking cheap, it's probably a good idea. The data is worse than expected. Why is the stock market up? Because it's not that much worse than expected. And in fairness, we were expecting worse data. So the expect <laughs> we were expecting data to be worse than expected. Does that make any sense? Basically, the, the official expectations, and I know I'm starting to sound a little ridiculous here, but the official consensus forecast is cooked up by a bunch of moronic old economists who happen to work for investment banks and 
They're in some dusty old office down some corridor. Nobody really knows where that is and nobody fires them because it's sort of fun to have them on CNBC and be wrong. That's probably the entertainment value of those guys. And then you get the real market, the real traders who kind of think they're probably a little off. And we kind of thought they'd be a little off. Uh, so it's a little higher, but not that much higher. But yeah, here, yeah, the inflation poses a headache for the Fed and the White House. Now, I suspect that miraculously, inflation will start to fall in the summer, just as electioneering really kicks off. Interest rates will get cut and then we can claim responsibility for a soft landing, beating inflation and interest rates coming down and everybody's got a job including everybody who came from Guatemala. Nothing against Guatemala, but you get the idea. So I think that's really what's happening here. So I think they're stalling. They're buying a bit of time. Um, oh, somebody who tried to bail out SVB made $285 million. Oh, good on the bankers, hey? I mean, they need to make a little bit of money. TikTok, you think it's going to get banned in the US? What are your thoughts on that one? And another bailout for airlines. Oh, yeah, airlines are a great thing to invest in. So that's where we are uh, this morning. What's the best way to, to put Boeing, says Thomas? Thomas, read the, read, read the newsletter. Seriously, go, go here. We put out a whole article on this two days ago. There we go. You think we should, we should we should run a Winston fund, right? Just let them let them pick stocks on the basis of food. That'll probably do quite well, right? The Winston food ETF. You'll only want to in, invest in sort of agricultural products, I imagine. But that's a bit a bit of an issue. Does the CPI look good? Um, no, not really. <laughs> no, not really. But it's not that far off that we need to kind of just run around like headless chickens and go, oh my God, oh my God. So it's just, it's a little higher than we thought it would be, but not drastically higher. Just core inflation is higher than we thought. Goods inflation is back a little bit, which is probably why, why, why that's going on. So it's, you know, inflation rate is at 3.2 versus 3.1%. Yeah, you know, potatoes, potatoes kind of type thing. If you look at the real inflation, there's a great website called trueflation.com. I actually believe that inflation data, certainly more than the government. And they say US inflation is at 1.65%. So half of the government saying, and it means interest rates will get cut too late. It means the economy will probably go to shit towards the end of the year or early next year. But in the meantime, we've got AI and we've got a party and a rally. We should enjoy it. If you're, a, if you're a Brit, one of you tuning in, then UK inflation is still a little higher than that. 3%, but still lower than the government. It was at one point at 18% or 17 half, which is kind of bonkers. But yeah, there, there we are. Andres, have you have a few Facebook groups? We really only have one. Be careful. Meta is a cesspit of... of uh, spammers and scammers. Uh, our group isn't, but I'll find it for you. I'll put I'll put the link in here for you. There it is. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, there we go. That's 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 the the right one. And 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 you can also see, you see me, and you can see actually we're live in there too. Isn't that fun? <laughs> um, watch out for messages that come from me. I'll have, an, have a little admin symbol on it. That's me. Otherwise, it's somebody who uses, uses my picture and tries to message you. And Zuckerberg counts them as monthly active users, <laughs> uh, which is interesting. So markets are brushing it off. Absolutely. Absolutely. Banning TikTok will be like banning crack. Well, I mean, Zuckerberg will be in favor, undoubtedly. I'm sure there's some lobbying going on there. I certainly would, would hope so as a loyal shareholder. Oracle is up 12%. Their earnings statements were something like, we will be a high growth company for the foreseeable future. We have no competition. Seriously, I quote. Pretty interesting stuff. How much money should you have to be able to start options trading? There isn't a hard rule. I always say $10,000 up, it makes it's a lot more fun because 
you get a percentage return, right? So you make a higher return if you've got more money, if your trades are a little bit bigger. Um, can you start below that? Sure you can. It's just a little bit more hard work, but there's no hard rule. Jay says, is the 8 p.m. slot still, still open? We had about 100 slots available when I started this because I, I, I doubled the size. We went from 500 to now 1,000 capacity. So uh, absolutely, Jay. Check it out. FelixRunsOrg slash webinar. Links down below. And you can still uh, grab yourself a spot till it's full. Mohammed's asking about the Reddit share price. I honestly don't have a thought on that. I don't really know what the valuation's based on. I don't know what the advertising revenue looks like. I don't know who wants to advertise on Reddit. I'm sure some people do. Um, it is a bit of a cesspit of negativity, I, I find, but there is also obviously some interesting stuff on there. So it's an interesting one. I think it's a good platform. I think, I mean, the, the user activity is great. It's just, will people put up with it becoming more commercial? That's the question, right? Because if it becomes a lot more commercial, it becomes like meta and then everyone flicking and and hates it. Um, Thomas says, why do the webinars instead of a YouTube live? Um, it's a good question. Get a bit more features. It's a bit more private. You don't get like all the noise and stuff in there. The algorithm doesn't really like that kind of content. If I go off a little bit too deep in educational, we get very, very few views. It means the next couple of videos get punished. I think it's kind of nice to do it in a safe, private environment. Um, it's a bit more peaceful. So that's why we, why we do it. And it's a platform that works very well. So be careful with the Reddit IPO. Just be careful with IPOs. I, who makes money in IPOs? Bankers, lawyers, nobody else. And it's just, it's a massive gamble. I, I, I don't generally participate in IPOs. And the guys who got into it before the IPO probably paid a quarter of what you were paying. So it's their exit. You're financing their exit. So it's a bit, it's a bit daft, really. Um, smash the like. 30K in the US, are you a pattern day trader, says George? Yeah, we can. There, there, are, there are ways around that, though. We've, we've got some roundabout ways that make sure you don't become a patent day trader. So that isn't really an issue. Can you check what? MCHI. What, what, what's that? Yeah, like MCHI. Oh, um, iShares China ETF, like like KRE or something. Yeah, there's been a very nice bounce in, in, in Chinese equities. Um, not so much visible on that one. But let's have a look at KRE. I think that's a little bit clearer. Um, not regional banking, what is it called? <laughs> um, Crane share, that's the one I was thinking about. Crane share, that's the KW, KWEB is sort of the biggest, the biggest ETF out there on this. Uh, up 3% today, which is, which is nice to see. So a bit, bit of a bounce. And so, you know, we are significantly off the bottom here, which is, which is very positive. We like to see that. We've got some gaps up here, another gap up there. But, um, so we'll, you know, we'll see, we'll see how far momentum takes us. Tesla is being requested, absolutely. And, and make sure you come and join me literally in 12 hours for the live trading training where I'll show you exactly how we do what we do and how we're up like, I think we're up 15% this year. We did about 100% last year, about 120% the year before. And I'll teach you the very three steps of how we manage that for free at felixfriends.org slash webinar. So grab yourself one of the last 100 spots there out of the 1,000 that we made available, which is kind of cool. So Tesla, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's still a falling knife. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it still is. It's not looking really brilliant. It's, it's a, it's a downward trend and um, we're sort of consolidating in no particular direction at the moment. So it needs some it needs some news. It needs something to get people excited about it. At the moment, it's just not looking very good. Short term. Long term, it's a different story, right? Long term, you don't look at this. Long term, you just look at the fundamentals. Do you like it? Do you like management? Do you like the product? And, and, and then you're good.
What's a falling knife? Okay, the, the first thing I would do is put on some moving averages. That's a good thing to do. That gives you gives you some indication. Are you below them? So I've got on here 50, 100, and 200 day moving averages. We are below all of them. That tells you we're definitely on a downward trend. And yeah, that's kind of what you need to know in a sense. When do you break out of it? Well, the first step would be to break through the 50 day moving average line, which right now sits at about $200 just above it. And if you do that and you exceed the previous high, the one here, you break out of that, then you get a little bit of bullish momentum. And then you have to break through the next moving average line, which right now sits at 218. And then you have to break through the next one at 234. And obviously they'll move a bit uh, as you move up. And, and that's when you are back in, you know, off, off your meds and, and, and you, can, you can start to kind of recover. But right now, yeah, falling knife is a, is a, is a downward trend that hasn't been broken. You will also see people connect all the lovely dots, which is a reasonable thing to do. So you just connect the highs roughly. So we're just going to take these three here and then we connect the lows, something like that. And we're still in that downward phase, right? It's a pretty wide one I've drawn here. You could, you could position it a little bit more narrowly, but you get the idea. You're basically, where's my pen? You know, you're, Pen, please. Pen, please. Maybe. Yeah. You know, that's that's your trajectory right now. It doesn't mean it's going to have to go lower, but it certainly doesn't give you any real impetus to go, well, it's definitely going to the moon next week, unless you know something that I don't, which could be some product thing or massively wonderful to say its numbers or improving margins or, you know, something. Good morning. Um... I'm going with Winston's picks today. We should do that, right? We should do a Winston's pick video. That'd be quite funny, actually, shouldn't we? I'll do that. I'll, I'll make a little, I'll probably make a short on it or something. That could be quite a fun thing to do. Uh, do you think, um, <laughs> Island Bill is asking, uh, do you think Microsoft's going to go go up or down? Well, how are you feeling today, Bill? Feel like things are going to go up? Um, still looking pretty good. I mean, we're above the 50-day moving average lines. This is the opposite of a falling knife, right? This is a you know, you could call it an erection. <laughs> it's pointing up. And you've bounced off the 50-day moving average line here. You bounced off it here. And we bounced off it again here. And that's actually a sign of strength. You know, try not to make really inappropriate jokes here. And we're up again a little bit today. So yeah, nothing really terrible happening here. And, and, and also, this you could actually argue that this is a bull flag, which is a rally followed by a sideways consolidation, which can be a good thing. I'm not a huge believer in those, to be honest with you. I think there is a 50-50 chance of whether it's going to go up or whether it's going to go down. But as long as we're above the 50-day moving average line, I would lean towards it's going to go up. Uh, I think it's more likely. Obviously not, um, not um, you know, financial advice. So there we are. Let's have a quick look then pre-market and market's literally about to open this very second. In fact, it is open. And look, Microsoft is up a percentage point. Let's have a look at NVIDIA because where NVIDIA goes, the market goes. 2.7% up. That's a nice way to start the day. Although if you remember yesterday's opening, it was a fairly exciting one. So we get a tremendous volume in the first minute because lots of people said their buy orders before it for some strange reason. And then we whipsawed quite a few percentage point here, points here within a few minutes. So let's have a, have a look at that. <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> oh, I like that. Um, so here we are. Important that NVIDIA stays at these levels or higher, to be honest with you. Right now, it seems pretty good. 878, that's pretty good. Resistance sits at $900. <laughs> I like all the jokes in here. Now, do we have um, anybody who has not found the like button because he's worried about his electricity bill because electricity has gone up again. Energy prices are up. Inflation is up. But not so much that it's frightening people. People are more frightened of NVIDIA, which at the moment is up two percentage points pre-market. The good old folks at BTCUSD 
are up also 0.2% here at 72,253, which is not quite an all-time high, is it? But almost. Is it an all-time high? No, slightly off it. Where were we yesterday? At 72,910. So we're off about $700. I mean, doesn't really matter anymore at these levels. Uh, but yeah, a lot of our favorite tech stocks are actually looking quite nicely, shaking off the government data. Well, Palantir is down a percentage point. Banking could be looking very dodgy. So far is 1.7% down. Um, new, you want to do a comparison of new and SoFi? That could be an interesting one. Yeah, it's an interesting business, new. I quite like it. And look at the rally. I mean, does it matter that it's down one percentage point? Not really. Look at where it is on the chart. It's very, very, very high up. We're only down about 40% of yesterday's high. Um, Yella is saying, British American Tobacco have done something very weird. What is it? It's a ticker, BTI. Well, they've told you that that chewing stuff they put out is 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 good for you. To trim ITC steak. Oh, they're going to do a more buyback. So they sold a bit of a tobacco manufacturer in India, which is presumably fairly low margin stuff. Plus, tobacco is going out of fashion because. Why use tobacco when you can vape the stuff, apparently? And it's going to bring them in 700 million pounds and they're going to do a buyback. So it's good. Good for investors. Investors like a buyback. It means the share price goes up. So I think that's as simple as that. So by, so far, seems to find any excuse to drop. Well, the, the banking bailout program ended yesterday evening. It's kind of an interesting one. I thought we'd get a get a new one before the old one expires. The, the Fed seems to be looking for an interesting march. <laughs> so they haven't announced one yet, which is slightly baffling. And regional banks are really down a little bit, but they definitely are thinking, we didn't get a bailout. What do you mean we didn't get a bailout? Somebody do something about this. And Fed, Fed Chair Powell said there will be bank failures, which is also an interesting statement. So we'll see what happens over there. My pleasure. Yella, the rally is continuing. It very much looks like it. I think NVIDIA is kind of our canary in the coal mine right now. We're still at 1.7 percentage points, which is pretty good. In fact, yeah, it's very good. Um, we start a little higher today. We're at 881 at one point, but still looking very, very positive overall. If we look at the heat map here, we are looking at a glorious glorious green, right? It's a sea of green. Okay, Tesla's down a little bit, but that's pretty much it. Everything else is basically up, which is pretty wonderful. That's where you can see it a bit better if I move it over, right? Uh, CBX is down a touch, but that's about it. Costco is absolutely flying. I don't know where it went. Where it, sorry, Oracle rather. 11.5% up on pretty impressive earnings and pretty impressive announcements really expectations rather so that's a that's really something i mean that's a that's a gap and a half isn't it uh they are above 2023 highs right now is that an all-time high yeah looks it which is interesting <laughs> you think jp morgan will be a bank failure no, jp morgan will, will will gobble up some of the better bank failures you see, they're, they're good bank failures and they're bad bank failures. And the good ones, JP Morgan will be the, the white knight in shining armor who will come to the rescue of the poor taxpayer so you don't have to pay for it and that they get all the profits. PayPal can't clear 60. Yeah, sort of stuck there, isn't it, really? 59, 48 percentage point down again. And it just keeps hitting the 50-day moving average line, the yellow line here. It keeps coming down. Not much you can do about that. Moderate uptrend, but not a lot still a falling knife. There's another falling knife. Zoom out and look how much of a falling knife that is. It's, it's, a, it's a shocker. Fundamentally, I still like it though. My trade's actually making money. All it's got to do is like not really go anywhere. There we are. If you want to come and learn how we do what we do, how we are 15% so far this year, more than 100% last year and the year before our SCE, come and join me live in literally 12 hours. FelixFriends.org slash webinar. It's the first evening live trading training that I think I've ever done. 
And there were about 100 spots available when I signed up uh, to this uh, session here. We had literally like 900 signups, which is bonkers. So I, I love that. I love that you guys are want to learn. I love that you are building this community. We are also heading for 100,000 subscribers. I would say probably this week, which is kind of crazy. So we're going to have to do something about that, aren't we? Um, suggestions as to celebrations that may or may not be inappropriate. Uh, put them in the live chat. I'd love to see it or put it on the community posts. In fact, I might put a poll out, see what you guys want to do. And um, But yeah, no, in all seriousness, I am incredibly humbled that you are allowing us to build this community together and just help people understand the market, how it really works, have some fun, but ultimately make money, right? And be better at making money. This is really what this is all about. And that was kind of the, the glimpse of an idea three years ago. And, and, and here we are three years later. And it seems like we it's too late to stop now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so there we are. Um, You sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger when you say margin, margin. Uh, well, I, I, I'm German, so I can't really help that part, I'm afraid. The accent is a, is a, is a mystery, as are many things in life. Uh, so, yes, there we are. That made me giggle. Brilliant. Can we get a recording? Anders, you are, where are you, Anders? No, no, I, I, I get. Doing an evening Eastern time session is, is good for... You yanks out there. It's less good for the Europeans because it's in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. You know, we're going to start singing. Uh, Felix Schwarzenegger, thank you. And um, I might have to go to the gym a little bit more. I will see you in 12 hours, if you wish, at felixfriends.org slash webinar. I wish you a glorious day. Have fun and see you later. Thanks for tuning in.